In 1984, Robert Bluce of the University of Hawaii published a landmark paper proposing a radical idea, that the Taiwanese indigenous people spread out from Taiwan to colonize the lands of Southeast Asia. This represents a vast swath of land that spans from Madagascar to the Philippines, to Malaysia, to the islands of Polynesia, including Easter Island, to even New Zealand. Confusingly enough though, this doesn't include uh, Australia for some reason, uh, which is not included in this group. This theory, called the Out of Taiwan Hypothesis, was radical at the time and remains thoroughly debated. There is substantial support for its validity in the linguistics and archaeology, but in other areas, not so much. If you want to learn more about the recorded history of the Taiwan Aborigines, check out my earlier video. Alright, let's get to it. In the 19th century, linguists examined overlaps in the vocabularies of different languages, especially those about the natural environment, to draw inferences about their shared heritage. This allowed them to reconstruct a theorized common ancestor of all the languages in the Indo-European language family, which some 46% of the world's population speaks, the Proto-Indo-European language. The discovery of Proto-Indo-European sparked great romanticism across the intellectual world. Imagine it, languages spoke by the peoples of Europe, the Middle East, all stretching into India, all tracing back to one. After the discovery of Proto-Indo-European, scientists looked to see if the same techniques can be applied to the Austronesian language family. This language family covers languages spoken on the Malay Peninsula, Madagascar, Java, and the Philippines. It's one of the two most diverse language families in the world, with some 20% of all the world's languages. The first major theory on this was made by the Dutch linguist Hendrik Kern in 1889. He looked at the Austronesian languages and proposed three different things about the ancestor language of Austronesian, which he called Proto-Austronesian. The first observation started with how he noticed that the languages had many different words for sugarcane. Examples include Malay Tebu and Fijian Dovu. Same with other foods like coconut, banana, bamboo, and taro. This led him to believe that the linguistic homeland of Proto-Austronesian was located between or near the tropics. The second thing was the distribution of cognate terms for rice. This led him to believe the homeland would be on or near the Asian mainland. The third thing had to do with cognates of marine wildlife. This led him to his third hypothesis, that the Proto-Austronesian homeland is near the sea. With these three hypotheses in mind, Kern looked for languages in those locations that could conceivably be related to the ancestor language. He saw some shared loanwords in Vietnam and Cambodia, and proposed that the homeland was probably there or near there. For the larger part of a century, this stood as the main theory. Bluth's critical advancement was in grouping the 1,200 languages of this family into 10 subgroups. Nine of these subgroups were spoken only by the Taiwanese indigenous people. The tenth subgroup gathered together all the other Austronesian languages in the family. This implies descent from those Formosan languages, differentiating over time as one group of Taiwanese aboriginals emigrated to those other islands. Additionally, since Kern advanced his theory of the Austronesian homeland being in modern-day Vietnam or Cambodia, Observations and language records have improved. Bluce reviewed the new data and realized two critical new things. First, he saw that all the modern Formosan language subgroups and a few others in the Philippines had words meaning cold weather or north wind in tropical areas where cold weather did not actually exist. It implies that the language spoken by the Proto-Austronesians understood cold weather, implying distinct seasonal temperatures. Vietnam is hot all year round, being tropical. Taiwan, on the other hand, has rough summers, but also cold winters. Yes, you, I get mighty cold in December. Second, languages in southern Taiwan, the Philippines, some parts of Borneo, and the Marianas had words meaning typhoon. Vietnam and Cambodia, not to mention Indonesia and its neighbors, are not in the Pacific typhoon belt, but Taiwan is. And finally, Taiwan has all the following things that the Proto-Austronesian language is theorized to have words for. Dogs, deer, wild pig, 
scaly anteater, one type of monkey, and a large ruminant that was not a deer. Blue's theory superseded Kearns and was accepted as the general theory for the origin of the Austronesian languages. The Taiwanese indigenous people spread out from Taiwan by hopping from island to island. It appears that they would settle an island, grow there for a while, and then send new populations in search of the next island. The maritime technology to travel the 140 kilometers from southeast China to Taiwan Island pales in comparison to braving the open Pacific Ocean. But once they figured out how to spread out from Taiwan to the Philippines, the spread happened very fast. As the theory goes, Taiwan was first settled from China in the time spanning 3500 to 3000 BC, likely from people in the South China Dayak tribes, a major minority ethnicity today living in the South China, Thailand, and Vietnam area. They took a thousand years to refine and hone their seafaring technology, and then began island hopping to the Philippines by 2000 BC. They spent the next thousand years spreading across the Philippine island chain. From there, it was just 400 years to reach the islands of West Indonesia and East Timor, West Polynesia and Samoa another 400 years. Over the next thousand years, these new societies would colonize the various islands of Polynesia, Hawaii in year 900, Easter Island 1000, and reaching New Zealand by year 1200, but again not Australia. There are some early evidence that they reached South America afterwards, but at this point we are way off the reservation. The problem with all this fancy linguistic technique is that though it is based on widely accepted procedures, it is all still theory. As tests became more widespread, scientists began to look at genetic evidence. It is here at this point that I want to step back and emphasize this little bit. The Out of Taiwan theory does not say that the Taiwanese aboriginals are the direct genetic ancestors of all Austronesians. Many Eastern Indonesians and Melanesians, for example, are clearly not. So it would be a glib and inaccurate distillation of the theory to make that claim. The foremost challenge to the out of Taiwan theory was a 2008 paper that looked at paternal genetic lineages and argued that the Taiwan aboriginals were not the ancestors of Austronesians. Instead, it claims that they both descend from the aforementioned South China Dayak people and evolved independently of each other cousins, not ancestors. Other genetic scientists argued that this cannot be definitively concluded as the data came from limited samples of contemporary populations. Linguists further brought up a back migration theory where Formosans returned to the mainland and resettled there. Another paper in 2014 took genetic samples from an 8,000 year old skeleton from Matsu. Their conclusion argued against the South Chinese Dayak population theory and proposed that the aboriginals entered Taiwan from the north, where cereals like millet and rice were domesticated, and then they traveled their way down south through the island, and then exited to go on to the Philippines. We should probably wait a few more years for the academic back and forth to settle. I'll let you know. So the genetic tests show some form of ancestry, but are on the whole uncertain. There must have been great amounts of intermixing over the generations between the Taiwanese populations and other settlers. So we got to look at other evidence to resolve this deadlock, like the archaeology. And the archaeologists seem to back the linguists. Excavations show matching pottery styles and artifacts between the societies of southern Taiwan and the islands of the Philippines, which are generally accepted as the Taiwanese aboriginals' first colony after Taiwan itself. While digging up the Tainan Science Park, scientists found red painted pottery and examples of pig dog domestication and millet cultivation about 5,000 years old. They also found some stone called Taiwan nephrite or jade. The Batanese Islands are a chain of Philippine islands about 150 kilometers south from Taiwan and 200 kilometers north of the Philippines. Four sites at those islands discovered the same red painted pottery and critically, that Taiwan jade. The jade would be further identified in sites across the Batanese Islands and beyond, like in Luzon, giving strong evidence of the native Taiwanese's abilities to jump from island to island, another strong vote in favor of the out of Taiwan theory. 
Like with so many theories about the origins of certain peoples, this one can get fraught with politics and the like. But the reality is that we all gotta come from somewhere. And if you want to really go back, then you can say that we are all natives of outer space because it's the atoms in our bones come from the stars. I got some comments on my video about the Taiwanese aboriginals asking me why I was ignoring the fact that the Taiwanese aboriginals are the ancestors of all Austronesians. But the actual fact is that it isn't a fact at all. It's a theory, and a fiercely debated one as we speak. And in the end, you can go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's a matter of which theory's evidence you choose to believe when you make that claim. All right, everyone. Have a good evening. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye.